Infanticide is when a society has made the decision to cast away their young through ending the life of infants without the child's consent. Throughout history, there have been many examples of this practice, and today we are going to be discussing what mankind has deemed acceptable in treating their young. The Canaanites as seen in scripture, were a people who possessed the land that would be today modern Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. They had an idol that they worshipped called Moloch, which was often represented and crafted as a bull which was a fiery furnace. The priests of Moloch would have their drums beat loud offer little children to this false god by casting the infant in the furnace and have their drums drown out the child's screams. God shows his hatred for this practice through the Old Testament and openly condemns their practice in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18 verse 21 And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Although this practice among the Spartans was also seen through much of ancient Greece and carried into the Roman Empire, the Spartans are notorious for this. They were a society built on their military and strength, and their disregard for life can be seen in how they treated many newborns. The child was taken to a place called Gerusha, where the baby would be examined for abnormalities. If the infant was deemed acceptable, the child would return to their parents. If not, the child would be abandoned on the mountainside to die of asphyxiation and starvation. While there are many other ancient civilizations that practiced the killing of their young in wicked and horrendous ways, by far one of the most graphic and depraved ways that this has ever been done in human history is that of the practice happening in the West today. For those who have decided that the child they have conceived will be of an inconvenience to them, either by the woman's choice alone or of additional pressure from the man who impregnated her, they will go to a clinic and have what is coldly classified as a termination of pregnancy. The process then includes tools and blades being entered into the birth canal of the woman and tearing apart the child limb by limb, even causing a puncture through the skull of the child and using a vacuuming device to suck out the dead pieces of body, brains, and tissues out of the person who could have been a loving mother of who could have been her loved child. The practice of abortion, either within the womb or out of the womb, is a ritual that mankind will tolerate for their own self-serving pursuits. These can be seen among the things that the Lord hates. Proverbs 6 verses 16 to 18 These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, an heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. The question is, can you, a woman that has already gone through with an abortion, escape the judgment of God's wrath for what you have done? The answer is yes. God can even forgive you. And by coming to know the grace of Christ and realizing that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you can know that one day he will wipe away your tears, and there will be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Turn to God, 
ask him for forgiveness and he will take your sins of scarlet and clean you white as snow.